But today we are here to say enough. In, indeed, today we are here to say too much. You've gone too far, Barnett. 60% of accommodation services privatised. 60% of early childhood intervention services privatised. Learning and Development Act in its entirety. Disability services registered training organisation status relinquished. Domestic supports in group homes axed. And of course, let's not forget our colleagues, the community social trainers whose jobs were cut last year. Do you remember those were jobs that were going to, that were going to be picked up by others in the non-government sector? Well, to this day, we don't know, there is nowhere Nowhere that we can refer those people needing training and support to support them to feel more confident and more safe living independently in the community. Shame on you, Fellow DSC workers, these cuts to DSC make for a pretty bleak future. I put it to you, this isn't death by a thousand cuts, it's wholesale slaughter. We're talking 500 jobs, possibly more and certainly more to come. As we've heard, this state government wants out of service delivery altogether. We bastards! We! This government's cost cutting extends beyond DSC, notably the slashing of 500 uh, jobs in education in WA. 350 of those jobs... 350 of those jobs being education assistants, helping some of the most disadvantaged kids in our community. Kids with disability and Aboriginal kids in remote areas. So in just over two years, WA has lost some 6,000 permanent and fixed term positions. 6,000! drive to privatise the public service out of existence. We, we need to work with our colleagues in other sectors of the public service and wage a united struggle to defeat this. We need to join our education colleagues at the next stoppage, support our colleagues in health, in transport, in agriculture, corrective services and a host of other agencies who are under the knife. In a collective fight for our jobs, we're waging a campaign for quality services to remain in public hands. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of talk out there at the moment about government bureaucracy and red tape and how this holds back innovation and flexible approaches to service delivery. Community do it so much better, we're told. Let's outsource all our services to the NGOs. And those lessons tell us that the legacy of this push to privatise human services, to do human services cheaper, is that human services end up in the hands of the private operators. Not-for-profits don't have the economies of scale to sustain services and before long are squeezed out by private profit-driven profit operators. We've all heard of them. Serco, who does detention centres, prisons, and now hospitals at Fiona Stanley. G4S, who's been repeatedly done for defrauding the British government on various contracts to do with prison monitoring and, and transport. And GSL, who were responsible for the death of Aboriginal man Mr Ward in the back of a prison vehicle. And the list goes on. I want disability services in the hands of profiteers? No. Should human services be in the hands of those who want to make a profit? No. 
We care about the people we support. We are passionate about our jobs. We're trained, we're skilled, we have a wealth of expertise. Expertise developed in some cases over a period of some 30 years, as you heard from Julie and others here today. Let's be proud of that. Let's value that. Let's preserve that. Don't let them toss us on the trash heap. Some of this they're doing under the guise of changes afoot with the transition to NDIS. Well, that's a furphy. We want a more equitable, more resource disability sector. We're on board. We can provide these supports. The fact that WA is the only state trialling a different model of NDIS service delivery in the form of my way shows our commitment to this. Given the opportunity by management, DSC workers can, indeed, would love to, innovate. Released from the bounds of funding parameters and government strictures, DSC services can be flexible. We don't need to look elsewhere to do that. We can deliver quality and flexible services and in the future we can deliver an NDIS that works for all people with disability. Yeah. I now want to formally move the motion, um, <laughs> now that I've had my say, um, and then we'll get a, a seconder to speak to it subsequently. Okay, so the motion, most of you should have a copy of it in front of you, but I just want to read that out. We commit, one, we commit to ongoing industrial action like rolling stoppages and work bans in key areas that will affect government administration but not disadvantage the people with disability with whom we work. Yeah. Two, we commit to pursuing a cross-agency campaign to defeat the divide and rule strategy of this government. Yeah. Three, we commit to work with the community and in particular those affected by the plans to cut DSC to speak out about the impact on their daily lives. Yeah. And four, we commit to a campaign to defeat the workplace reform bill, uh, you'll know it as the Terminator bill, that will enable large scale sackings like those seen in Queensland and New South Wales. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Janet.